I think that we all have that one friend who one day took his car to the tuner and came back to us saying, guys, he just connected the computer to my car and now I have 30 horsepower more. Obviously, we're talking about cars that we're just going to use on track without breaking any law, any rule, okay? But the question is, how is that possible that by just changing the ECU maps, we can gain 30 horsepower? I mean, why isn't the stock car already that powerful? These are the questions that we're going to answer in this video. Here we have the Golf 7 TDI. In order to understand how this is possible, we first need to understand how the ECU works. But before understanding how the ECU works, we need to understand how the engine works. The idea behind the internal combustion engine is a pretty basic idea. If you take something flammable and you set it on fire, it will set on fire. And that fire will produce energy. So what if you take that energy to create motion? That is the engine. You mix fuel and air inside a chamber, you compress them, you set them on fire, and boom! The explosion pushes a piston, which makes spin a set of gears, which makes spin the wheels. So you created motion from combustion. Obviously the first engine were crap, and in order to improvement, not only we needed better components, but we also needed something that controls those components. Why? For example, in order to get the best result between fuel performance and pollution, for each part of fuel, you need a 14.7 parts of air. So you always need to mix those in order to get that proportion. Then if the temperature somewhere in your engine go too high, you need to cut the power in order not to break the engine. Same for the pressures. If they are too high, you need to cut the power. Therefore, you need a brain capable of controlling all these components. You need something like an orchestra director. That's why in 1978, with the first computers available, General Motors introduced the first ECU. And from that point started the age of electronics. So what is the purpose of that ECU? The purpose of that is to manage all the components of the engine in order to let the engine work the best possible way and the safest possible way, getting the best performance without breaking the engine. But how does it work? Basically, the ECU receives input from many sensors all around the engine and the car, which are telling the ECU what's going on. Temperatures, pressures, driver requests. And according to those sensors and according to the instructions inside the ECU, it decides what to do with the engine. If the temperature is too high, you don't get the full power. If the revs get too high, they get limited. If there's too much fuel compared to the air, it adjusts the carburation in order to get the best possible result. Now, what's a clear example of ECU which has been invented million years ago? Our brain. Our brain works exactly like an ECU. Let's take the car for example. Inside the engine you have a sensor which detects the exhaust gas temperature. Now, if that temperature is too high, you risk to break the engine. So, in that case, the ECU says, okay, stop, please stop pushing because you risk to break the engine. Therefore, it limits the torque. Now, let's talk about our brain. We have temperature sensors all over the body. And what happens if you touch something too hot? Those sensors send a signal to the brain, which says, okay, stop touching that because you might break your hand. We avoid the overheating exactly like the engine. And that's incredible if you think about it. We have built all the technologies based on the nature. Okay, so now that we know how an ECU works, let's try to understand what remapping the ECU actually means. What would happen if we can get inside the ECU and change some values in order to make the engine go faster and more powerful? In order to understand it, let's roll back to our previous example, our brain. Each one of you, at least once in your life, I think, went out for jogging, right? And you all know what, what happens when you start running. As soon as you start to push, it gets hard to breathe. You start to feel pain in the muscles. You, you start to feel bad overall. And that is our brain which is telling us, please stop, slow down. And in that moment, we really would love to slow down. I mean, we would feel more comfortable in our bed, relaxing. And probably in that moment, we start to slow down and we lose performance. Now, imagine if we are able to get inside our brain and disable that safety control. So that when we start to push, we, we don't feel tired anymore, we don't feel bad anymore, so we push more, 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 and suddenly what happens is that... This makes you understand that that signal that our brain sends us, it's what saves our life. It's a signal that makes us not go over the limit. But what if we are able to get inside our brain and not disable that safety system, but just 
push it a little bit further. Probably we will be able to perform better without collapsing. And actually, th this act of reprogramming our brain is what we do with the training. When we're training, we're actually training our brain to move the limit a little bit further. The secret is to know how far can we push that limit without breaking our body and without getting injured. In the engine, it's exactly the same thing. The engine designer have put lots of limits which have many different purposes. Safety, let's say that the engine can reach 5,500 RPMs, let's limit them to 5,000 so we are safe. Let's say that the exhaust gas temperature can reach 920 degrees Celsius, let's limit it to 880 in order to be safer. So if you know how the ECU works, if you know the physics, if you know how that engine works, you can get inside the ECU, remap it and make the engine perform better. Obviously, I'm talking just about sports modification. Don't do them on the road. It's illegal. And this makes you understand why in order to be a good tuner, you need to know lots of things about computer science, mechanics, physics, because if you don't know these things, you might break the engine. So now that we know what ECU is and what remapping means, let's see how you remap it. First of all, we're going to use this. This is the Flex. It's a device designed and manufactured by Magic Motorsport, which allows you to connect to the ECU and read and write the data. Now, if you remember the previous video, I told you that you have three different ways to connect to the ECU. You can use the OBD port, which since 1999 is mandatory on every car produced. We can use the bench mode, where we connect to some specific pins to the ECU. Or we can use the open ECU method, where in case of disaster like the last time, we need to physically connect to some parts of the ECU in order to recover the data. In this case, we don't need the bench or open ECU mode, but we can just connect to the OBD. So now we will connect to the OBD, read the data, and we will go to modify them. So this is StageX, an app designed by Magic Motorsports, which allows us to modify the maps. Now here we can see our project and Notice this, you can see stage one here. I don't know if you know it, but stage one, stage two, stage three is some sort of convention established by tuners, which determines the level of modification that you applied on the car. So stage one is super basic modification, probably just ECU map and a few stuff. This app runs on web browser, so you don't need to install any software. And that's pretty cool. So let's open the, the Golf project. And look at this, this is the dump of the memory. So these are all the data inside the memory. As you can see, it's impossible to understand what they mean. So this is the work the Magic Motorsport had done. They did the reverse engineering on those data and they understood what they mean and what they actually do on the ECU. So they translated this uncomprehensible data into something comprehensible for the humans, which are the maps that you can see here on the left. With each map, you can change the behavior of the car. But before looking at this, I want you to notice this part, solutions. If you click on that, you can see some quick solutions like DPF off and EGR off. By just clicking on them and applying yes, you can do them with one click without changing any map. And that's super cool, super fast, a great tool for tuners. So let's take a look at the maps. For example, we have the engine torque limiters. These are maps that modify the torque depending on the situation. And for example, if we open torque limiter, we can see that Depending on the RPMs and depending on the pressure, you can get different amount of torque. So if, for example, we open the modified version, look at the data, boom, the values have been increased. So what the tuner did here, he just increased the torque values in some specific RPMs and pressure values. So basically this engine is getting more torque. But there's another important thing that I want you to know. Look at this, you also have the single value torque limiter. What is that? Inside the memory, you don't only have the map like this one, you also have hidden somewhere a single value which limits the torque. For instance, if we open this, in the original map, we can see 250. This means that if you change the map, but you don't change this single value, the map will not work because this single value is limiting everything. So the Magic Motorsports engineers were so good that they found inside the memory this single value, which is super important because without that, you cannot change the map. So look at this. If we go on the remap version, boom, 350. So you also have these other maps which control the idle speed RPM, the injection system, the rail pressure. And as you can see, the yellow ones are the ones that have been modified. The tuner worked on all these maps. 
So it's a super complex job, okay. Now I wanted to show you this map, which has not been modified by the turner, but it's fun because you can understand how this system works. This is the pedal position in monitoring. So what does it do? Here you have how much you're pushing the throttle, here you have the RPMs, and the result of the two is the torque delivered by the engine. So when I'm talking about torque, I'm talking about how much the engine is pushing, okay? Now look at this. Here you have 600 RPMs. Now let's look this part. This is the zero throttle, okay? And look at this. Above 600 RPMs, the torque is zero. What does it mean? It means that if you are at 3000 RPM and release the throttle, you have no torque. So the engine go down. But as soon as you get to 600 RPMs, if you go below it, boom, you get a torque, even if you're not accelerating. Can you see it? That means that if you go below 600 RPMs, you want the engine to stay running. So it's like you're accelerating. And look at this, this is, this is super cool. Look at what happens if the engine go below for 100 RPMs, the torque goes way up, even if you're not accelerating. And if you're just accelerating 10%, you get a huge amount of torque. That has been made to help you start. Because what happened, if you, I'm talking about manual gearbox, okay? If you start to release the clutch and you're not accelerating enough, what happens to the engine? It goes down, okay? So in order not to let the engine turn off, the ECU increases the torque to help you start and not stall the engine. And I think this map is cool. Also, you can see how by increasing the throttle amount, the torque increases. This means that it's following the throttle input. Also look at this, look at how above 5000 RPMs, boom, the torque immediately goes down. That's because at 5360 RPM, you have the RPM limiter. So just before hitting the limiter, the torque starts to go down in order not to reach the limiter at full torque. Last but not least, we have this value here, which is something funny because I remember one day I was driving on track, a basic Mercedes class A, and I saw that as soon as I hit 197 kilometers an hour, the car was limited. And it felt like the car had more speed. And why was it stuck at 197? This is the answer. In the ECU, you have some speed limiters. For example, in this Golf, it's set at 310 km an hour. So what the tuner did, boom, 295. And you're probably wondering, why do we have more than one map talking about the same thing? This doesn't happen only in the speed limiters, but also in the torque limiters. That's because, have you ever noticed that as soon as you start the car when it's cold, for example, the minimum is higher than normal. For example, it's like at 2000 RPM. That's because depending on the situations, the ECU loads different maps. So the ECU is continuously switching between maps. That's why you have more than one map for the same thing. So the job of a good tuner is to know which values he can modify in order to make the engine perform better without breaking everything. So I didn't do this map, I'm not capable of doing it. We will now load it on the Golf and we will see how much power we gained. Now, in order to measure the difference between the two maps, we can use this. This is called Dyno Road. It's a tool designed and manufactured by Magic Motorsport, which is a portable dyno. It's very simple to use. You connect it to the wheels with no traction. You connect it to the mobile app. You find a straight road. And by following the app instructions, you can calculate the torque and the power of the engine. Okay, before watching the results, we upload the new map. So as you can see, we connected the battery charger to the battery because during the right process, the ECU will absorb a lot of energy and if the battery drains out, that might be a problem. So we connected the computer to the flex, which is connected to the car OBD. Now we opened the software, we started the right process. So here are the results. With the stock map, we had 109 horsepower and 257 newton meters of torque. But with the new map, the stage one, we have 145 horsepower and 306 newton meters. We had an increase of 36 horsepower 
and 48 newton meters. And that's incredible if you think about it, it's just a software modification. So the question is, why isn't the stock car like that? The problem is that with this map, if we don't remove the anti-pollution filters, they will soon get obstructed and we will break them. So this map is just meant for sports preparation. For example, for racing, for rally, where we don't need the anti-pollution filters, so we can work on DCU in order to get more power can wear the components sooner. So that's why the original stock car is less powerful because you don't need the maximum performance. You need reliability and you need the car running for a hundred of thousands of kilometers. But with this video, you saw the potential of Bondor Sports preparation. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks Magic Mod Sports for providing all the tools and all the data and I'll link everything below in the description. Bye bye guys, thanks for watching.